Yes. Okay. okay. So hello and good evening, everyone. I welcome you all to our second event of the day, case discussion, breast lump by uh, Dr. Rajgopal Shinoy. Uh, myself, Abhilash Singh, I'm a third year MBBS student and I'm the senior executive officer of Academic Wing at Clinicase. I welcome you all in this case discussion. And we have two presenters today, Anna Maria George and uh, Tanusha. So, and the supervisor for our session is Dr. Rajan. He's continuing as a professor in KC Manipal. He was the head of department from 2014 to 2015. Associate Dean Academics from 2015 to 2018. He has won the Good Teacher Award at KMC eight times. He has a teaching experience of 34 years. He has a number of he has 64 publications under his name, author of four books, which are Manipal Manual of Surgery 5th edition, Manipal Manual of Surgery for BDS student, Manipal Manual of Instruments, Manipal Manual of Clinical Methods. Dr. Rajgopal Shanoi has been part of 132 guest lectures and 180 clinical dis discussions at state and national level. Really glad to have Dr. Rajgopal Shanoi as our supervisor uh, for, for the case discussion. I welcome you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Abhilash. Am I audible? Yes, sir. you're clearly audible. And okay. I'd like to add one more thing. Dr. Shinoy is going to gift one of his books to two presenters or the two winners of the competition uh, of one of the competition which happened today, case presentation competition. And the second competition is going to happen tomorrow, the quiz discussion, uh, quiz competition. So stay tuned for that. Thank you so much, Dr. Shinoy, for this. And uh, I'll hand over to uh, Anna, Anna, you're there. Yes. So go ahead. I request all the participants to mute themselves. And if you have any doubt, you can type it in the chat box. We'll address your doubt after the session or in between if sir seems it important. Okay. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. Uh, good evening, uh, doc, uh, Dr. Anna. Before you start the presentation, uh, number one, uh, please do not have any inhibitions. That is the first thing you should know. Okay. Uh, we will consider this as a more of a learning session. It is not a not an examination. That is second point. Next, this is these are some online teaching programs. So don't go too fast. You, I hope you are clear. So please make the things very clear. Read out whatever you are presenting, and also. When a question is asked, uh, take some time and answer. Just think for, don't take too much time. Then we'll have to have a, we'll have some issues. So, so don't be in a hurry. At the same time, just think and then answer. And presentation should be very clear, lucid presentation. And uh, if you do not know, say immediately, sir, I do not know. That's all. Hope this is clear message. All right. Yes, sir. Okay, right. So, All the best to you. Thank you sir. I'd like to add one more thing. The delegates, you can also answer the question. Uh, answer the question asked by sir. So the question is open for everyone. You can answer by writing, by typing out the answer in the chat box. Okay. Thank you so much. I hope everything is clear with everyone. Anna, you can go ahead. Okay. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, Clinicase presents today's case discussion. The topic is a breast lump, and the tagline for today's topic is every ribbon makes a difference. Next slide, please. Our supervisor will be Dr. Raj Gopal Shenoy Kalya, MBBS MS, FRCS Glasgow. Our presenters are uh, Tanusha Menezes, fourth year, AJ Institute of Medical Sciences and Research Center, Mangalore. Karnataka. And uh, apart from her, me, Anna Maria George, academic year uh, is pre final year, but as a National Medical University. Okay, let's proceed. Uh, so, demographic data. So, our patient's name is Mrs. Sulochna Desai. She is a 53 year old female. She's a school teacher in, and she's from Mangalore. Her socioeconomic status is class two, according to the modified BG Prasad classification. 
She is married and non-consanguineous since 28 years. Date of admission, uh, 27-5-21, uh, and date of examination is 28 May, 2021. So our patient's chief complaint was a lump in the right breast since five months. Okay, history of presenting illness. Patient was uh, apparently all right five months back when she felt a lump in her right breast without any other symptom. The lump was insidious in onset and then it rapidly progressed to the current size. Uh, the lump is painless and there was bloody nipple dis discharge. There was a nipple retraction. Uh, swellings in the axilla were present. No similar complaints in the left breast. Okay, the uh, picture shows breast lump showing a uh, bloody nipple discharge. And the second picture, uh, first is a normal nipple and second is a retracted nipple. Negative history. Uh, she had no history of fever, pain and pus. No history of loss of appetite or significant recent weight loss. No history of uh, taking OCP or HRT. No history of irradiation, uh, no history of backache, shoulder pain, dyspnea, hemoptesis, headache, or seizures. No history of trauma, uh, no history of breast malignancy in mother or sister. The past history of the patient, uh, she's a non-diabetic and non-hypertensive. There's no history of chronic illness such as tuberculosis. She has no history of any medical or surgical interventions. She has no history of any allergy, no history of any drug intake. Uh, her menstrual history. She uh, had menarche at the age of uh, 13 years, regular cycles of four to five days duration. And she attained menopause uh, eight years ago. Obstetric history, patient is Pumipara, one girl child, normal vaginal, full term delivery, uneventful. Her daughter is 17 years old, breastfed for one year, no history of abortion. Then uh, family history, no history of breast cancer or related deaths in the family. Patient's elder sister suffered from carcinoma colon. No family history of hypertension, diabetes mellitus, epilepsy, tuberculosis, asthma, or any cardiovascular disorders. Uh, personal history of the patient. She consumes a mixed diet. Uh, she has normal appetite. Sleep is undisturbed. Bowel and bladder movements are regular and no substance abuse. So in summary, uh, a 53-year-old female presented to the OPD on 27th of May, 2021 with the lump on the right breast since five months. The lump was insidious in onset, but uh, it rapidly progressed. The lump is painless. There is bloody nipple discharge accompanied by nipple retraction. Okay, Anna, um, uh, just for the information for all the students, this summary slide is a specifically I told you to add during this virtual case presentations, okay? In your uh, university examination, especially Indian now or this continent, uh, we don't write that summary in the case sheet, but examiner may ask you, you just have to recollect the important information which is present in your patient, which gives a possibility of a diagnosis. Like whatever you are written here, lump is the in important issue. Rapid progress is the second important issue. And uh, bloodstain discharge she has got. And uh, importantly, nipple retraction. Right? Yes. One other word would have been very nice to add in the summary always is the menopausal status in a carcinoma of the breast patient. It may not be important for, uh, let us say, carcinoma of the stomach or... Uh, hepatocellular carcinoma, but in a patient who has got a 
carcinoma of the breast in this when you quickly summarize add the word post menopausal patient now with this background now let us go back to the first slide yeah please go to the first slide so examiner will definitely start asking you questions yeah i first like your uh, ribbon concept uh, for the international medical students first congratulations to you yeah just hold on to that now this is your demographic data correct now in that what do you think is the risk factor in this slide itself uh, her age definitely her age. very good so and... all of, as all of you know that uh, age is one of the strong risk factors for carcinoma of the breast yes what else uh age her uh, that she's a female is also... very what is the you know uh, being a female itself is 100% risk of a carcinoma developing in the breast is it clear so female definitely age yes now with this other things economic status and all you are written is it important here uh, not so much uh, but uh, urban lifestyle might slightly affect but not so much so there are both ways you know it can be uh, a patient who has got a postmenopausal obesity we can even put it as uh, something like a rich category people mm -hmm. have more tendency tendency other way is a nutritionally depleted whatever you can you are written there uh, she may not be very attentive in uh, recognizing the problem she may come late to the hospital she may not afford a special indian scenario so presentation can be late to the hospital however whenever you write certain names like this kuposwami scale or prasad and all uh, you can expect the examiner to ask you how do you grade them you are written there class 1 class 2 class 3 like that so you also should know i hope uh, message is clear otherwise this truly not really required is it clear right so those of you who are would like to know this was written some 3 decades back or 4 decades back the prasad classification or the grading as per the per capita income per month right so it's been modified several times so you can refer to that right yes can we have the next slide yeah so one question to you what is the most common uh, method of presentation of carcinoma of the breast these are the questions which are usually asked okay uh, it could be a lump yes what is the hesitation the lump itself is the most common method of presentation of carcinoma of the breast often you people do a mistake telling that you know bleeding per nipple it is it is not very common at all you know it's maybe 0.5% or so so bleeding per nipple is not the common presentation so lump in the breast is the common presentation uh, preferably use the word lump for the breast swelling for the neck and mass in the abdomen that is better okay right what are the other ways in which a lump can present one is you said breast lump and second you said is a, a nipple discharge mm -hmm. what i put what are the other methods um i am referring to carcinoma of the breast when she comes and tells you what are the other things she can come a uh, nipple retraction can be there she can definitely notice a nipple retraction yes good uh, then uh, maybe ulceration okay some... these are little advanced ones ulceration bleeding etc yes anything else uh, can she maybe... yes thickening of the uh, area around the uh, nipple um that may not be you know that Uh, yes it's possible in the western population our population any important things for the axilla she may complain to you or the arm arm uh, maybe a uh, pain or discoloration sometimes in the arm not pain i am referring to big axillary nodes she can complain mm -hmm. of lumps there and even a simple simple history she may tell to wear my blouse i am finding difficult on one side right yes. the, one side uh, wearing a blouse difficulty means you know you should uh, very very uh, suspect oh this could be something related to any other uh, uh, suppose she complains of low back ache uh, could be could yes be. yes what 
that's also not an uncommon presentation. You can come with the low back ache. Uh, you have a slide there. So uh, you should be ready with the, all this presentation. Just a point of importance to repeat. Uh, bleeding per nipple is not the common presentation. Right. Next slide, please. Somebody has put in a chat box mentioning about the pain. So what is your answer for that? Does this uh, lumps are painful? No, it is painless. Suppose a lady of a reproductive age group, 30 to 50, if she complains of pain and the lump, what do you suspect? Pain and the lump. Uh, could be uh, mastitis. Or... It could be mastitis. Mastitis is more common in lactating women. I Otherwise, the, in a reproductive age group, you would consider a benign breast diseases. And among the benign breast diseases, Fibroadenoma is not painful, but what else is pain? What is painful? Um, Aberration of normal development and involution, otherwise called as Andy, correct? Andy is nothing but fibroadenosis with pain. That is nowadays called as cyclical mastalgia with nodularity. You have heard the term? Cyclical mm. mastalgia, right? Yes. Cyclical mastalgia. So patients who are in the reproductive age group, who complains of pain, more likely they may be having a cyclical mastalgia with vague irregularity or nodularity. It is typically bilateral, bilateral. Some, she may complain of some vague lumps with the pain. So pain suggests usually it's a benign condition. Lactating women pain means it is lactational mastitis or abscess. In the absence of lactation, common cause being a cyclical mastalgia with the nodularity. And carcinoma of the breast lump, if it has to be painful, it has to infiltrate the skin or maybe chest wall or maybe advanced fungation, etc. Right? Okay? Yes. Now, you look at your uh, presenting complaints in this patient. Uh, please try to use the word, don't say bloody discharge. Just say blood stain discharge. Okay. I want to ask you, I said carcinoma of the breast is rare to present as a blood stain discharge. Tell me which is the benign condition which presents as blood stain discharge. Uh, duct ectasm. Duct papilloma. Bad okay. Duct papilloma. Papilloma is a benign tumor. Duct ectasia is a different. It gives rise to ectasia, like bronchiectasis. Like, like what you get. So it kind of a stasis, secretion, periductal mastitis, all that forms. Now, you have written that nipple retraction is present, one of the strong points for you, and uh, swelling in the axilla. So you just have to say patient also complains of swelling in the axilla. You don't have to write all that present, present like that. Is it clear when you write the case sheet? Nipple retraction is seen. Swelling patient also complains of swelling in the axilla. And... Uh, Yes, it is nice to finish off everything related to the, uh, this patient. Then mention no similar complaints or she does not complain of any complaints on the other breast. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, there's one more thing which is very crucial for you to make a diagnosis here. Rapid progression. Correct? Mm -hmm. So, do you, do you have any idea? Is it since five months it is rapidly growing? Uh since five, it was a gradual onset, but uh, it has rapidly progressed. So we generally say that insidious in onset and then slowly progressive, but maybe uh, for last few days or two weeks or three weeks, it may be growing rapidly. Okay. Now you tell me, you have any other condition of the breast which can grow much more rapidly than carcinoma of the breast? It happens in more younger patients. Any other, uh, mm -hmm. any other condition? It's yes. It's called a Fillot's tumor. You heard of Fillot's tumor? Yes, yes. Yes. It's a. It's. It's a. Basically, we used to call it as benign, but then malignancy decided by pathologists. Look at the nuclear pleomorphism, mitotic figures, etc., etc. All right. So you should know this two conditions. And among the carcinoma of the breast, which pathological variety is very rapidly growing? 
pathological type. It can also happen in lactating women. It's a inflammatory breast carcinoma. Okay, it's also called as mastitis carcinomatosa. All right. Yes, we'll go to the next slide. Yeah, this is a uh, your. I just want to ask you one question. Um, that blood stain discharge. What is seen above? Above means I can't show that. You may be able to show me in the, with the whatever it is due to what? Yeah, that that one, that one, that one. That looks um, like. It's yes. A, looks like a small ulceration. Um. Then which is that uh, nipple area of complex? Any seen there? Yes, there. So I just mm -hmm. want you to understand that uh, many of these patients undergo core needle biopsy. Okay, you heard of that word, core needle biopsy, mm -hmm. and uh, you may find a bleeding there. So you need to ask the patient: Was it spontaneously developed, or it developed after a procedure? Is it clear? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If it develops after a procedure, for me it looks like core needle biopsy. The other one in the nipple area of complex, there is some blood is seen. Probably that is the blood stain discharge. That's what I understand, right? Yes. Can you go to the next slide? Yes. Um, instead of writing as negative history, just say it's a continuation of your history of present illness itself. I agree. You are. You can always tell there is no history of fever, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, what is important here is. These are all important negative history of positive importance, right? Now, one or two questions everyone should know. What is the relationship of oral contraceptive pills to the carcinoma of the breast? You have written there, no? OCP. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, the, some types of cancer will have uh, estrogen receptors, will increase or progesterone receptors. No, it that is not, ER not, not related to the taking uh, tablets. Okay, what my question you need to know is oral contraceptive pills have got a very small percentage, very small. That too, if you stop taking for two years, there's a hardly any chance of developing a carcinoma of the breast. But hormone replacement therapy, HRT, has got a relatively more incidence of development of carcinoma of the breast. That is one thing you should know. Okay. Anything to know about irradiation of the, you have written there, no history of irradiation. Can you say something about that? Uh, sir, uh, prolonged exposure or, or repeated uh, like chest x-rays or even mammograms can increase the chances of breast cancer. Mammogram, you know, it's a very small, again, a point, uh, you know, very, very less uh, centigrade uh, irradiation. Uh, chest x-ray, no. Uh, but what is more important when they ask you, uh, carcinoma of the breast, this question, why did you ask? One, exposure when patient is young, for example, 20, 25, after the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombings, I think you know what happened in Japan. So those who were exposed, who are young, young, 20 years, 22, they are developing a carcinoma after two decades are very, very high. Okay, that is number one. Second, childhood lymphoma. You heard of lymphoma, Hodgkin's? Yes, Hodgkin. So childhood lymphoma, the irradiation given to the mantle field or extended mantle here. So after a period of one to two decades later, there's a chance of developing a carcinoma of the breast. And lastly, repeated chest X-ray. No, you said chest X-ray. I'm sorry. Repeated CT scan. One CT scan sometimes can be as bad as 200 chest X-rays. Is it clear? So yes. during the recent times of COVID, you might have heard, no? Many patients would have undergone many CT chest. So this is an important point to remember. So. Whenever this question is asked, please answer in that way. Either it is a young patient who is irradiated, accidental, what happened in Japan or Chernobyl, uh, this one disaster. Second is repeated CT scans. 
and third is hodgkins do not ever say uh, acne tonsil all that thing which were mentioned earlier i hope it's clear right um next important thing is a uh, history of a uh, backache that is a very crucial point here in all the do not uh, too much mention about shoulder pain etc just say no history of low backache why low backache particular so it could be a uh, metastasis to the bones yeah which bone roughly low backache means uh, lumbar vertebrae very good so do you have Uh, what are the three common bones which are affected from carcinoma of the breast? Uh, so vertebrae, femoral bone, hip very bone. Very good. Very good. So remember as LFT, you know, we all by heart know LFT. Lumbar, femur, thoracic, in that order. Most common is lumbar vertebrae, then femur, then thoracic. So it's sensible to ask a low backache. Uh, there's no point in going asking everywhere. Do you have shoulder pain? Do you have leg pain? Do you have foot pain? All that thing. Okay, right. Um, lung metastasis occurs very late. Uh, you are written there: hemoptysis, headache, seizures. Really not required. Just you to mention that backache is the one important thing you should mention. After that, abdominal distension should come. Why abdominal distension? Sir, I'm not sure. Abdomen. Uh, the breast carcinoma can spread to spread to liver. 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 It can also give rise to ascites. Correct. Yes. Have you heard of Krukenberg tumor? Sir, uh, I think to the stomach. Oh uh, no. It also can happen oh, from the you? breast. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Very good. But it happens in premenopausal lady. Is it okay? Mm -hmm. So carcinoma of the breast. Lady comes with the. Young uh, 30, 35 lady comes with abdominal distension. That gives you a clue. Oh, yeah, I'm dealing with maybe Krukenberg. I'm dealing with ascites or maybe liver metastasis. Okay. Trauma is the last one. Not all that uh, important. Rarely traumatic fat neck was very, very rare. Now, that last sentence is very important. We will discuss it later in the family history. Uh, we'll go to the next slide, please. Yeah, out of all these things, whichever you have mentioned, tell me uh, one thing which is not written here, which is important. Anything related to the breast lumps? Like, for example, she says, I had a small lump which has been operated. So some benign breast disease where there is, I was talking to you about fibroadenosis, correct? Cyclical mastalgia with nodularity. Somebody does a biopsy and the pathologist report as atypical ductal hyperplasia. They have uh, almost uh, four-fold increased chances of developing carcinoma of the breast. Is it clear to you? So in the past history, one important thing, yes, these are important because we ought to treat the patient, uh, whether it's a chemotherapy, radiotherapy, surgery. So you do ask a medical, surgical, allergy, everything is fine. That's good. But add one sentence. That is history of previous breast surgery. If you write there, you should also know why that sentence you have added. Your answer should be biopsy showing atypical ductal hyperplasia means there are more chances of developing malignancy. Is it clear? Yes. Right. Can we go to the next slide? Yeah, yeah, this is important. So in relation to carcinoma of the breast, what are the protective factors you tell me? Protective. Uh, sir, um, definitely uh, lactation, uh, breastfeeding is protective. Very good. Uh, then uh, normal uh, menarchal age and normal menopausal age is protective. So multipara, yes, important. Yes, yes. Uh, then any then childbirth, any childbirth cutoff age? Age, is, age uh, when for the child is born, like if it is less than 20 years, it's protective. If it's more than 30 years, there is increased risk of breast cancer. First child before 35 is advised. Okay, first child. For child born after 35, uh, there is a risk. Do your patient uh, qualifies in that category? What is her age? Uh, she's 53. And what is their uh, child's age now? 
said 17, correct? Uh, yes. I think yes, sir, seventeen. I think. So, what do you think the age in which she got the child? Uh, uh, Thirty six. Uh, late. So, see, see now. This is what is analyzing your clinical presentation. You have a female who is postmenopausal, who has only one child, correct? Yes. And child is born when she was thirty six years of age. So, these are some of the risk factors. There is more estrogen exposure. In your patient, correct? Yes, sir. Ah, these are the things which you need to keep it in mind, grasp. So, pregnancy after 35 is a risk factor. First child born should be preferably before 35. Okay, yes. right? What is the definition? What do you mean by menopause? Sir, uh, completion of um, uh, menstruation stop. Suppose uh, stops for uh, and she starts uh, breeding after three months. Four months at the age uh, of 15. Uh, yeah, the time is uh, given at as least, uh, nine months. Uh, at least 12, 12, 12, 12, 12 cycles. Yeah, 12 cycles. So you need to know the. So that's why in every patient given to you, we ask this question number of children, where the first child born, lactation. So obviously, lactation is protecting, right? So mm -hmm. Money. Abortions, abortion, again, uh, not a good good factor. So that is what we call it as a typical menstrual history. And of course, obstetric history are written. Yeah, can we go to the next slide, please? Yeah, so I think uh, we have already asked, uh, she has breastfed, but important point here is the ch girl child. So she is 17 year means she got it when she was 36. Right, next. Yeah, just hold on to this. Um, patients, elder sisters suffered from carcinoma colon. Do you think uh, it is some relationship is there? So um, related to family history. Yes, uh, uh, Lynch syndrome. Yes. What are the common uh, um, uh, risk factors in the syndromes wise for carcinoma of the breast, which can be familial? Uh, familiar, so yes. BRCA gene, definitely one and two. One is BRCA gene, one and two. Yes, anything mm -hmm. else? Sir, Where uh, recently with the Lynch syndrome, they told of MSH6 and Correct. PM, PMS2. Anything Genes else? Also. Good. Good. Uh, you are doing good. Leaf Ramani syndrome, you heard of that? And the Cowden syndrome. Okay. Um, so okay. these are some of the, they may ask you, they may carry inherited gene, right? These are tumor suppressor genes. So they may transfer that gene to the siblings. And uh, these are genetically, these are, gen that's what we call as a genetic evaluation. Should be done in BRCA1, BRCA2, or whenever these patients give this kind of a history. So this is elder sister who had a carcinoma of the colon. It may be a sporadic incidence also, but then important to, one question you have to ask here is, what was the age of her sister when she got carcinoma of the colon? Why is this question? To know if she is uh, having Lynch syndrome. Not only Lynch, any genetic history, including BRCA1, 2, the tumors tend to occur in younger age group. Yeah, Correct? So these are the patients, that history. Suppose patient says, my elder sister was 70 year old when she got carcinoma of the colon. That may not be any syndrome related. It can be a etiology sporadic. I hope it's clear. Yes, so yes. whenever you have a younger patient, bilateral breast carcinoma, with the history, strong history of, let us say family history is there, always, get them evaluated for genetic evaluation. Is it clear? Mm -hmm. Test for BRCA1, BRCA2, etc., etc. So in this one significant history is carcinoma of the colon. Also remember her father. So we are talking about sisters now, family is the first degree relative, but then men can also transfer. Patients who are having carcinoma of prostate, prostate also have a correlation with the carcinoma of the breast, right? And there are glisten score has been mentioned, may not be important for you for that. 
seven and more press here. Can we proceed to the next? Yeah, anything uh, particular in this you would like to mention? Uh, appetite is normal, so that is so, a good sign. Yeah, so in uh, relation to carcinoma of the breast, uh, nothing much to say here. Only we have to add on to that uh, postmenopausal obesity, alcohol, smoking. These are the few things which may which may act as a risk factors. Taking vitamin C, folate, beta carotene, and all protective. That's where the nutrition is concerned, right? Okay, go ahead with the next slide. Yeah. So now, so now, relevant points to tell you when the examiner asks you is postmenopausal lady. Rapidly growing lump, painless, very key word here, and blood stain discharge with nipple retraction with one history of a patient relative having carcinoma of the colon. Yeah, if you have any, any questions which are there, um, we'll just, uh, uh, any questions which are there, we can transfer to me. Uh, if there are any questions from up to now, whatever we have discussed, otherwise, we will go to the uh, general physical examination. Go ahead. Sir, is, yes. I, I think I had hand over to Tanusha for the Thank rest of you. Thank you, Maria. All the best Thank to you. you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Hello, sir. I'm Tanusha. Yeah. Can, can I have a look at your video for at least <laughs> a minute? Okay. Yes. So if you have if you have any problem with the bandwidth and all, yes, you need not uh, uh, switch on your video. No problem. Yes, go ahead. Okay. Um, a general physical examination. The patient was examined in sitting position with both the hands on the sides in adequate daylight with proper informed consent and in the presence of a female attendant. The patient is conscious, cooperative, and well oriented in time, place, and person. She is moderately built and nourished. Her height is 147 centimeter. She weighs 47 kilogram. Her BMI is 22.3 kg per meter square. Yes, go ahead. Next slide, please. Okay, a right is. Her blood pressure is 110 by 70 millimeter of mercury. Her pulse rate is 65 beats per minute. Normal in rate, rhythm, volume, character, and there are no delays present. Her respiratory rate is 15 breaths per minute. Her temperature is 98.6 degree Fahrenheit. There is no pallor, icterus, cyanosis, clubbing, lymphadenopathy, or edema. Just hold on. Just hold on. Yeah. Uh, no, no, you are done well. One or two things here. Whenever you are presenting a cancer patient, uh, yes, you just need to mention one or two criteria. Undergraduates, if you mention, you will get definitely more marks. That's called a performance status. Performance. Yes, so, Karnof. So, uh, very good. Karnofsky and, and uh, in a no, cancer, I... ECOG. ECOG refers to Eastern Cooperative Oncology Group. Okay. ECOG. Just quickly yes. refer them. So if you will get definitely more marks so that, see what happens is if patient has got a lot of morbidity, obesity, asthma, diabetes, so then these are the issues will be asked. Uh, you can mention here lymphadenopathy, edema, etc. But remember, at the end of your breast examination, specifically you have to mention axilla and supraclavicular area. Don't say that I, I have already mentioned in general examination. No, I hope the message is clear. All right. Yes, go ahead. Okay. Breast examination. The patient is adequately exposed up to the waist and is examined maintaining proper privacy in the presence of a female attendant. On inspection, the right breast appears larger compared to the left breast. There is a single visible swelling in the upper outer quadrant of the right breast. There is no dilated veins, scars, or sinuses, no satellite nodules, QD orange, or no dimpling or tethering. The right nipple is at a higher level. There is circumferential attraction and the blood stain discharge present. 
the nipple is displaced towards the lump and uh, lump and outer the areola is displaced there is no cracks eczema or ulcer the left breast appears normal axilla swellings are present the supraclavicular and intra infraclavicular region there is no swelling present can we yeah can we go back to the uh, okay you continue please continue with this third slide yes continue Uh, this is our inspection, sir. Um, and these are the different positions yeah. in which the patient is examined. Yeah, just hold on. Just hold on. Uh, most importantly, you are going to tell now that I am starting the inspection. You have taken the permission of the patient already to examine her as yes, female attendant. Very nice. Good. And also remember a little bit of uh, communication skills. You need to talk to the patient and tell. See, I'm going to gently examine you. I will not cause you pain. If I cause pain, please let me know. Okay? These are the small things which helps in a longer one. Now, just tell me one by one, arms relaxed at the sides. Why, why do you do that? Tanusha? Tanusha? Hello? Abhilash? She is having some net, network issues, sir. Okay, no problem. Just a second. No problem. I'll, I'll take. Okay, till she comes back. Uh, yes, first, I can hear you now. I couldn't hear previously. Yeah. Why do you keep the hands by the side? First, this is, uh, to check the position of the nipple and asym uh, sorry, symmetry of the breast. You just have to say best method to compare always. Whenever you have organs which are two, you want to compare both upper limbs, yes. both lower limbs, muscle, muscle atrophy, for example, in a claudication patient. And a breast is one classical example. Always to have the symmetry, keep the hands by the side. And then you have to start nipple, areola, skin over the breast and size of the breast. Yes. You have mentioned about the nipple retraction. Yes. What is the cause of the nipple retraction, Tanusha? Uh, over here, I, it was mentioned circumferential. So I uh, asked you, what is the, always remember. Oh, yes. The ducts, the lactiferous is ducts are involved. Uh, please use proper words. Infiltration of the growth along the lactiferous duct causing fibrosis. Okay. Yes, sir. That should be the word. Involvement is no infiltration along the lactiferous duct and it pulls. That is what you get that classical circumferential retraction. Can you yes. tell me other type of retraction? Um, there is a slit type in case of uh, duct uh, papilloma. No, 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 not duct papilloma, I duct see, ecclesia, yeah. or yeah. even sometimes a, uh, some chronic mastitis would have happened. How do you classify the retraction of the nipple? Any idea? No, sir. It's simple. Unilateral, bilateral. Oh, yes, sir. Congenital retraction may be common bilateral yes. sometimes. Can be unilateral. So congenital or acquired, unilateral or bilateral, slit like or circumferential. With associated with the chronic disease, tuberculosis, chronic mastitis. So these are all we call as a remote retraction. So the most important keyword in the retraction of the nipple is a recent retraction of the nipple. Okay? Tanusha, yes. yes. yes now, sir. can you tell me the second position? Arms raised above the head. Why do you do that? Uh, in this method, uh, the, uh, like the swelling in the a breast or even in the axillary region becomes prominent and also uh, chest fall fixity like on inspection you get an idea like if the breast doesn't move up then it might be fixed to the chest wall and then uh, the skin changes become more prominent in this. Any other I, I agree with you very nicely you are told skin changes and when you uh, you know raise the arm like that you know some kind of a pulling of the pectorals also takes place some mobility, skin changes, early changes may look prominent, all right. 
But the most important other thing is, you look at the patient whom you, are, uh, you see the picture, hands on the hip and are relaxed, you are not seeing inferior quadrant of the breast. Oh, yes. Whereas when you raise the arm, you see inferior quadrant of the breast, you see the axilla, and in addition to what you said. And the last one is, of course, for the chest wall fixation. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes, Tanusha, one important question they will ask you at this stage, what is chest wall means? Uh, it means the uh, intercostal muscles, the ribs. These are the chest wall. And? 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 Serratus. Oh, serratus. What about pectoralis major? No, sir. It's not part of the chest wall. Minor? Minor? No, sir. So both P major and pectoralis minor are not because this is a common mistake done by the students. So intercostal muscles, ribs, serratus anterior, these are the constitute what is called as a chest wall. Right? Okay. So I think all of you know the three positions yes. and hands on the hip is uh, done only for the, you contract the, for to look for the pectoralis major contract test. All right. Why do you get purity orange? Uh, subdermal lymphatic obstruction, sir. And uh, purity orange, is, it leads to swelling, but the uh, pits, that is the air follicles and ducts of sebaceous gland. Correct, correct, correct. They're, they they're get fixed. fixed. Yes. yes. So yes. edema, edema is due to the dermal lymphatics, what you mentioned. That's you know, true. like orange uh, pits, orange you know, skin. Yes. Yes. Uh, suppose you see a patient with the lump, with the dilated veins. Dilated yes. waste. What do you suspect? For the time being, go away from cancer and think of a lady, a 30 year lady, rapid growing tumor with dilated veins. Uh, if it's a non inflammatory and I see this veins, then maybe sarcoma. Or if it's below, then. Yes, I was, the answer which I wanted was fillots. Yes, it can be rarely sarcoma. All right. So nipple, you comment on the nipple for the levels, retraction, any ulceration, any bleeding. Can you tell me one condition where patient comes to you and says, uh, nipple has been destroyed. What is it malignant condition? Pages disease, sir. So Pages. again, Pages disease of the nipple is not disease of the nipple. Yes, uh, it is inter intraductal carcinoma. Okay, yes. Go ahead. Next slide. Yes. On palpation, the left breast is normal. The right breast, there is no local rise of temperature, no tenderness. A hard, irregular mass is felt in the upper outer quadrant of the right breast, which measures 5 into 4 into 4 centimeters. The lump is stony hard and non-tender. Edges of the lump is irregular and discrete. The surface is nodular and irregular. Uh, the lump is fixed to the pectoralis major muscle and the breast tissue. There is no fixity to the skin or the chest wall. And the nipple areolar complex is not normal. Just hold on. Now, quickly, in this slide, what are the points yes, are present to tell you probably this could be malignant? Uh, I couldn't hear you, sir. In this slide? Yes, sir. What are the points which you have written, which will tell you it could be malignant? Hello? It could be malignant, sir. Yes. You have written, no? Hello? Hard. It could be malignant. Yes. What are the points? Yeah. It's hard, irregular yes. mass. Yes. And oh, yeah, stony, hard, non-tender. And the description of the lump, it's irregular. It has a nodular surface. Uh, these point towards. Uh, so one important thing you also you should can add upper outer and quadrant. The... Just hold on. Upper outer quadrant. Yes. Why it is common? Carcinoma of the breast is common in the upper outer quadrant. Why? Because there's more number of breast tissue in the more upper breast outer quadrant. Is present. It is better to use the words lump is hard. Don't say stony hard, bony hard. Then unnecessarily examiner drags you. So non-tender, hard lump, irregular, 
you have written that discrete is okay. One other point you should have written that moves with the breast tissue. You have written as fixed to the breast tissue. So what best is the lump moves with the breast tissue. Okay. Ah uh, yes, sir. Which lump in the breast moves independent of the breast tissue? Fibroadenoma. Breast. So fibroadenoma can be discrete, can be multiple. Young patient moves independent of the breast tissue, free mobility. On the other end, carcinoma of the breast arising from the breast tissue, so it moves with the breast tissue. That is an important point you should understand. What about cyclical mastalgia with the nodularity? What type of mobility it has got? It also moves with the breast tissue. Okay? Right? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, okay. Then how to differentiate? How to differentiate? You, you see your slide. Cyclical mastalgia, sir. From yeah. fibroid. From... from Carcinoma breast. Oh, okay. Uh, based on pulp is, uh, finding. Based on palpation findings. You, we are written there. Fixed to pectoral is yes, major. Yes. So cyclical mastalgia is a benign condition. It will not be fixed to P major, nor to the skin, etc. Hardly nipple retraction is not a feature, and uh, but it can also be sometimes hard. So in the reproductive age group, if you find a hard lump, it moves to the breast tissue. No doubt you keep it in mind cancer, but also keep it in mind fibro, sorry, cyclical mastalgia with the nodularity. They have a painful lump. What is the lump here characteristic? Painful or painless? Painless. Painless and non-tender you have written. So in other words, these are the points which you have to summarize at the end when you give a diagnosis. Sir, inspection-wise, this is how it helped me. Palpation-wise, this is how it helped me. All right? Okay. Anything else? Yes, Next, sir. Slide. Next slide. Yeah, what are these uh, uh, three things? Can you describe a little more about that? What did you do in this? Tanusha? Yes, sir. it's a uh, different uh, methods of palpation. First you... one is circular uh, motion where you start from the center and then go in a uh, uh, anti-clockwise direction and move towards the periphery. And uh, the pulp of the finger is used, the palmar surface of the finger. And then second one is uh, wedge palpation where they move from the uh, periphery towards the center, like a clock dial pattern. And last one is vertical uh, strike method where you move from top to bottom, like palpate and then repeat. Yeah, I think uh, all of you know that. Uh, you need to palpate all the patterns so that you palpate circular method. Then that wedges she has written, it can also be called as a spokes, you know, wheels, spokes of the wheels. So uh, these are few methods which are available to palpate so that uh, you will not miss. In general, you palpate four quadrants and forget sometimes nipple areola complex and underneath. So that is why. So please palpate every part of the breast carefully. You heard of breast self-examination? Oh, yes, sir. What is the ideal time to do that? When to a, suppose a lady comes and tells you, I'm scared, um, so that she will start a self-examination, say around 45, 50. Uh, what is the ideal time when I say related to menstrual cycles? Any idea? I, uh, I think it's before, like two days after the menses. Yeah, like just uh, three, four days later, because yeah. at that time of after, menstruation. So because pre-menstrual, they might very good, very good. Yeah, go ahead, next slide. Yeah, please go ahead, present yes. that. Yes, regional lymph node examination. The anterior and central axillary lymph nodes are palpable in the right axilla. The largest measuring two into three centimeters in the right axilla. 
the central groups uh, which is hard in consistency it is mobile no lymph nodes are palpable in the supraclavicular and infraclavicular region now for example what are the various groups of the lymph nodes which you will examine in the axilla if this question is asked yes sir, the anterior group and then the lateral posterior group and then the central and the apex of axilla epiglottis so what is more commonly involved the anterior axillary lymph and central group Sentinel. so anterior is in relation to which muscle Any idea? Anterior. Uh, anterior fold of axial muscle. Yeah. Which is the muscle there? The serratus. Uh, anterior no. fold? Pectoralis. Pectoralis major. Major. So you believe there is a minor. So in between there are also nodes called a trotter nodes. Okay. Interpectoral yes. nodes. Supraclavicular nodes, if it is enlarged, do you know what is the stage it becomes? In relation to N, N status, supraclavicular nodes. Yes or no? Hello. Tanusha? Supraclavicular, it is N3C, sir. N3C. Am I audible, sir? Correct, correct. N3C, correct. So I, N3 has got a ABC. I think uh, if you know it well and good, it is. Uh, UG level. So N3, right? You have got then uh, supraclavicular node, then infraclavicular node, then internal mammary nodes. So obviously that detection is done by CT scan. Difficult to make up the internal mammary nodes by percussion, even though some people describe it second, third, fourth space, but it is difficult to say. So all that you have to know is as students, you need to know how will you examine the axilla. I hope uh, not only online here, but you need to really go to the bedside and examine one patient of carcinoma, the breast, to realize what is hard, what is firm, what is soft. What, how do you put your hand, uh, fingers inside the center of the axilla, put it as high as possible, slowly come down, what you feel the central, rotate your hand with the thumb anteriorly, feel for the pectoral group. Then, of course, the other against the arm, there's a brachial group or lateral, go behind and for sub, uh, subscapular group. And apical group is very, very difficult to say, a, a whatever mentioned in the anatomical area. So don't say I felt apical group. Go behind and look for supraclavicular nodes also. Right? Yes. So uh, you okay. mentioned internal mammary node. I couldn't hear. It's not palpable. Then how do they find out? Yeah. So okay. internal mammary nodes are located in the second, third, fourth space. Is it clear? Intercostal spaces. Okay? Yes, sir. So when the nodes become sufficient big size, big, some people expect when you percuss, there is some change in the node. I myself, I am not sure. I am telling this only for you to give us this answer. If they ask you, how do you detect internal memory nodes? Your answer should be percussion in the intercostal spaces of two, three, four. It has come into importance because of the CT scan and it comes in the staging of carcinoma, the breast. Is it clear now? Oh, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so largest is two to three centimeter node. Yes, systemic examination. Other breast, I suppose, is normal. I hope we have mentioned that. Once you, once you finish the breast, axilla, supraclavicular node, that is the time mentioned all about the other breast. I have examined inspection, palpation, everything is normal. Okay? Right? Okay, sir. Yes. Uh, for the sake of time and uh, management, etc., we will uh, confine ourselves to one or two questions here. Abdomen, what did you look for? Can uh, look for distension, ascites, or hepatomegaly, and even abdominal mass like ovarian, cooking book tumor, like below. In, in your patient, do you get ovarian tumors? Or so, Krukenberg tumors are common no, in sir. lower quadrant, lower quadrant. Pre patients. Okay, you need to have a 
uh, ovulating, uh, you need to have ovulation. That is the time the follicles rupture and they are vascular. So the tumor cells, either it is uh, earlier used to call as a transillomic spread. Now also there's a hematogenous theory for a Purkenberg uh, tumors. So bilateral bulky ovarian metastasis. And uh, what about the spine you have mentioned? Specifically, what do you look for in the spine? Any uh, uh, like tenderness, deformity, like painful swelling in the lumbar thoracic? Usually, the carcinoma of the breast, uh, deformity, swelling, not all that common, but when you put use your thumb and give pressure not on the spinous process, but paraspinal. This is the only point I would like to mention now. When you put a pressure on the paraspinal region, there's a little rotational movement should take place that causing pain that is suggestive of metastasis because metastasis do not occur in the spinous process. It is in the pedicle and lamina. Yes. Go ahead. Yes. Okay, provisional diagnosis. A 53-year-old Mrs. Sulochana, a postmenopausal lady, presented with a painless lump, which is hard in consistency with irregular edges and the surf irregular edges and surface in the upper outer quadrant of the right breast. The nipple is retracted towards an outer. There's blood stain discharge. Areola is displaced. Pectoralis, major muscle, and breast tissue are involved. No other skin changes or chest wall involvement. The axillary lymph nodes and the infra supra clavicular lymph nodes. No, axillary lymph nodes are involved, the uh, central and the anterior part. The infra and supra clavicular lymph nodes are not involved. It's probably malignancy of the right breast and the staging is T2, N1, M0. So now, quickly, one small comment. Um, I hope the patient's actual name is not Sulochana. Always remember, uh, patient's identity should not be revealed, number one. I hope it's clear. Uh, you can mention it is an anonymous name. You can even just say 53-year-old lady. That's enough for us. Very important keyword, postmenopausal, because yes. when you give a hormonal treatment, there are some changes. Good. The common question which is asked is, in this patient, why did you say probably? You can firmly straight away say, sir, diagnosis, carcinoma, right breast, T2, N1, M0, stage, stage what? What stage? Stage. Stage two. Yes, sir. Stage two, clinical staging. So you add one C. C represents clinical. Is it okay? Yes. Clinical. Yes. So clinical stage two, T2, N1, M0. Can you quickly tell me what are the points to say now? Carcinoma of the breast from the history? From I the can't history. Say. What are the points to say it is a cancer of the breast? Sir? Tanusha? Hello? Yes, sir. Okay. Now there's what? a painless slump and in the right upper outer quadrant. It is hard in consistency and it has irregular surface and edges. Then there is a circumferential retraction and the nipple is deviated towards the lump, like it was mentioned in inspection. And then blood stain discharge is present. And uh, yeah, even a ray, she comes in the older age, which is 53 years old and postmenopausal. Uh, yeah, the areola is dis uh, displaced and there is involvement of the pectoralis muscle infiltration of the pectoralis muscle and the breast tissue. Uh, other than that, uh, the lymph node, the axillary lymph node group Very of lymph important. node, anterior yes. and central groups are involved. So basically, all that beautifully you are told, very nice. Induration, induration, very important, means hard hardness. Yes, sir. Intrinsic mobility is restricted. That means immobility, right? Infiltration, three eyes you should remember, three eyes. Induration, infiltration, immobility. Which are the points which will help you in the diagnosis of carcinoma in addition to postmenopausal? Because nipple retraction can be due to benign causes. Blood stain discharge can be due to benign causes. 
infiltration will not happen in a benign disease. Like you said, pectoralis major is involved and hard nodes in the axilla. This is how you say clinical diagnosis is. So you can even probably is not required straight away say carcinoma the best. Yes. The examiner asks you, do you have any differential diagnosis for this patient? Be bold enough to say, sir, in this patient, I do not have any second diagnosis. Is it okay? Only yes, when you have a doubtful situation, no nodes in the axilla, lump also has got some mobility, not fixed to pectorals, maybe patient is 35, 38. That is the time you can consider giving a differential diagnosis, not in this patient. Now, yeah, go ahead with the investigation. What has been done to your patient? Um, triple assessment, the first part which we discussed, history and clinical, like examination, clinical assessment. Then the second is radiological imaging. She is uh, more than 40 years old, so we can go for mammography uh, for diagnosis. And then on mammography, the finding can be like, there'll be irregular speculations, microcalcifications, and a solid group of uh, mass is detected. And then uh, the last uh, assessment is the histopathology assessment. Uh, fine needle aspiration can be done. No, it's uh, mal so yeah, four cut, uh, true cut just, biopsy can be done. Uh, so just hold on. Uh, so uh, we can't say you are uh, wrong if you say fine needle aspiration, straightforward case of carcinoma of the breast. We expect you to, once you say triple examination, you need to say straight away, say, I will do the clinical examination. Uh, you have done a careful examination now and I will do mammogram and I will wait for the mammogram report. Um, it will come, let us say, by rats category five. You know what is by rats stand for? Yes, the breast imaging reporting and data system. It standardizes the mammography and ultrasound. So very good. And uh, you, you, have, you have done a classical uh, uh, mammogram means what are the what are the views? Do you have any idea? Views? Yes, sir. Two views are there: craniocordial yes. and then mediolateral views. Yes. Mediolateral. So you you can also be focused one area. Okay. Yes. Screening mammogram is different. This is the diagnostic. Whichever area is particularly you are interested, you can more study that area. Okay. Yes. Yes. Sir. Uh, uh, well, Clustered microcalcification is a, another thing you need to mention. Okay. So any other question which commonly they ask you is, uh, does mammogram has a radiation exposure? A little, sir. Like <laughs> yeah. Type of yeah. 0.1 uh, centigrade, right? So how do the benign lesions look like? Any idea? Benign lesions, say fibrodinoma yes. or... Like over there, there'll be macro calcification. If it's malignant, we notice micro. And then it won't be irregular. There. It'll be well-defined uh, uh, mass. It is uh, either there, you know, there are too many, many descriptions are there, round or a popcorn or something like that. Okay, right? Now, after that, you need to get now histological diagnosis, right? What do you do now? You should straight away tell core needle biopsy. Okay, core yes. needle. Why core needle? It is, uh, it's malignant and uh, core needle, you get to know if it's uh, in situ or invasive and also the receptive status, lymph node status, or do you positive or negative? Like in fine needle only, if you get to know it's benign or malignant. So please don't confuse core needle. Was it audible, sir? Yeah, yeah, core needle biopsy of the lump. Okay, don't say lymph node status now. Core needle will be Tell you invasive, oh, yeah. invasive or in situ, which you are told. Very good point. Second oh. is immunohistochemistry. Is it clear? IHC. Heard of that? IHC. Hello. Tanusha. Yes. I can hear you now, sir. Uh, immunohistochemistry. What are the things which you look for? Uh, the uh... Uh, receptive status and the like, new. Can you name them? Yes, good. Like if it's a receptive status, ER and PR, there'll be brown stain nucleus. Ertinue uh, involves the membrane, the light Ex brown. Excellent, excellent. Generally, the tumors are uh, how many of them are ER positive? General, general. 
around 70 percent. Uh, I have no idea. 70 percent. Okay. okay. And her to her to her to around a 50 percent. Okay. Her to is around 50 percent. Okay. So yes. that is what is important. So you need to know ER status, PR status, HER2, and any other things you would like to know where you know the tumor proliferation. Heard of anything else? KI67, you heard? KI67, it's a proliferative index. Okay, right. Now you have done a true cut biopsy. Uh, any mammogram result is available in your patient? Uh, I haven't mentioned the Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, if you see carefully, yeah, can you can you have some idea about this? Can you tell something? Um, heterogeneously dense. Uh, like yeah, correct. I can Yeah, you can see now here uh, irregular article. Uh, you know, you can say architectural distortion, cluster yes. classification. Can you see the nipple retraction here? Look at the uh, nipple area of yeah. complex. So, mammo, good, good mammogram reveal all these things. It also has got a beautiful interface between the tumor and the pectoralis major. Axillary nodes, uh, I'm not sure there's one axillary node there. So, all this information you can get from a mammogram. Is it okay? Right, yes, I, will, I will give this you a is, Yeah, please. Say like it, yes, sir. Sorry? It's which view some is it medial lateral all four? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now the most important thing is uh, your patient has got a diagnosis of carcinoma of the breast stage two, and uh, I will give you an answer for your stage two. True cut has been don't say true cut. Sorry, core natal biopsy has been done, and uh, report comes as ER PR positive. Her two is also positive. And uh, K index is 10. If you know it well and good, what is your plan? Okay. What are you going to tell the patient? What is your plan? Yes, it is stage two. Uh, this one's a breast conservative uh, therapy. So with what, the, yeah, what you have to tell is, uh, I will Hello? discuss this with the patient and give her the options of breast conservation and uh, modified radical mastectomy. Okay? Yes, Always tell like that. I will involve a tumor board. Tumor board when I say pathologist, radiologist, surgeon, and oncologist. And ideal. I'm only talking about is to involve the patient in the discussion. Tumor board and give the two options of breast conservation and a modified radical mastectomy. Now, if you yes. want to do a breast conservation in this patient with a large lump, what is it ideal to offer in this patient? Uh, neoadjuvant uh, chemotherapy so that like the tumor size decreases. And also but, after the surgery, we can't start with radiotherapy because wound has to heal. So this helps. It's a systemic disease. So neoadjuvant Chemotherapy helps in that and reducing the size. Excellent. So you have told the important answers which I wanted to ask you. What are the advantages of neoadjuvant chemotherapy? Can you repeat again? Advantages. Uh, yes. It uh, decreases the tumor size. So uh, what do you think? Neoadjuvant chemotherapy is different before the surgery. Yes, sir. Downstaging of the disease. Okay. Please use the word downstaging. Tumor size will regress. Even axillary nodes may regress. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. Anything else? And yeah, second point was uh, because post-surgery, you cannot immediately start on radiotherapy because the wound has to heal. And uh, breast cancer is a systemic condition. So when you give neoadjuvant chemotherapy before the surgery, it helps in uh, controlling the... Excellent. So you also know the response of the chemotherapy. As you are giving, the tumor is melting. So you have the advantage in YO, okay, right? So down, down staging the disease, size will become less. So keeping this in the mind uh, is that carcinoma of the breast is a systemic disease. So 
who would like to give a new adjuvant chemotherapy um, at, at a UG level, just can you mention in your patient postmenopausal 54 or 55 year old, ERPR positive I mentioned to you, just tell me one or two names of chemotherapic agents you give and how many cycles? Uh, I, I know CMF, that is cyclophosphamide, uh, uh, methotrexid and fibrosis. Yes, another regimen is CAF, cyclophosphamide, uh, adriamycin and fibrosis. And the cycle, uh, for it's monthly for six months. Yeah, cardiotoxicity. Cardiotoxicity. Otherwise, uh, you can give that drug uh, with cyclophosphate cycles. And uh, taxins, taxins, you can also add. I think chemotherapy is a big chapter, a separate chapter. But all that what you need to know is uh, you should know the uh, name of the drugs. Number one, cycles are usually 21-day cycle for six cycles. And uh, can you tell me one toxicity of adriamycin? Uh, yes, sir, you mentioned cardiac toxicity. So it's usually cumulative toxicity, okay? Oh, okay. Cumulative toxicity. Uh, uh, what is the toxicity of uh, uh, taxins? Heard of taxins? Taxins, peripheral neuropathy, okay? Peripheral neuropathy. So all the hand and foot syndrome oh, like, okay? Hello? Uh, yeah, I can hear you now. So yes, yes. it was uh, cracking. So, what was that? You give neoadjuvant chemotherapy of six cycles. Tumor becomes small, but still present in the outer quadrant. What will you do now? Uh, like uh, uh, this one, surgery is so a modified radical mastectomy. You, you said conservation, correct? You said conservation. Oh, Tumor okay. becomes small. So, yes. What you have to do? Like wide local, excision. local wide excision. One centimeter margin is the one which is required. Okay. Local wide excision with the one centimeter margin and mention axillary block dissection. Okay. Yes, sir. Right. Now tell me after you do the local wide excision and axillary block dissection, what will you do next? Yes. Like post surgery, sir. All the patients. Radiotherapy has huh. to be given if they yes. undergo. Yeah, yes. If, if you are not done mastectomy, it is an indication for radiotherapy. Okay. Yes, sir. And patient is postmenopausal. Axillary nodes are positive. We already mentioned state 2 disease. Now, what will you do? Do this patient once the radiation is completed. Follow up, sir. Like every five. Uh, any, any drug? Any drug you have to give now? Postmenopausal. She is in luminal A category. If you know it well and good. Yes. What is the oh, drug? Yes, uh, because uh, she is ERPR positive. Hormonal therapy, tamoxifen can be given for five years. Every day she should take twice ten milligrams. That's why I asked you from the beginning. Uh, the postmenopausal status like premenopausal, postmenopausal. Tamoxifen is ideal in a premenopausal women. Oh. We give uh, 20 milligram a day for five years in a low risk category or a high risk for say seven years. And uh, okay. do you know any side effects of uh, uh, tamo tamoxifen? No, sir. Tamoxifen, you need to know postmenopausal bleeding, sorry, endometrial bleeding, endometrial cancer, coagulation, uh, you know, it, uh, tamoxifen, anti-estrogen, no? So these are some of the thrombotic events. All these are possible in a patient who has got a, uh, who is taking tamoxifen. Okay, right? Yes. Uh, you said pre Your patient Hello? is, in a premenopausal patients, we give tamoxifen. And in postmenopausal patient like this patient, you have to give aromatase inhibitors. Have you heard this word? Tanusha? Oh. Have yes, you sir. heard 
have you heard aromatase inhibitors word oh yes sir they stop uh, estrogen production where do you get the estrogen in a post menopausal lady let us say 60 year lady where do you get estrogen actually in post menopausal there's relative like estrogen entry because testosterone drops like it's an essence i can't hear you anyway it's from the body fat you know fat itself can uh, get con converted there right so aromatase in in inhibitors do this uh, they stop the conversion so uh, muscle fat liver these are some of the areas where estrogen is available so that's what is the whatever uh, this uh, aromatase inhibitor they stop that enzyme okay so name of the drug is letrozole 2.5 mg is given and side effects are osteoporosis even right so we have to look after the bone density etc etc so one thing is important that uh, carcinoma of the breast is a long case for you uh, you need to know the history clinical examination triple assessment very importantly you have mentioned and quick management of early breast cancer and uh, locally advanced breast cancer early breast cancer is up to stage 1 and 2 investigation is after triple assessment uh, you have to straight away you can go ahead with the treatment whatever you have mentioned as a surgeon even in the exam if you tell ultrasound i will get of the abdomen it is acceptable that is fine otherwise hence it's not really required but if it is all case of labc labc when i say locally advanced you need to get a ct scan of the chest and abdomen and symptomatic patient with a bone pain you need to do the whole body bones uh, bone scan so uh, this what i what we complete i think uh, time is also um, abila abilash yes sir um, uh, anything uh, from the chat box any questions or anyone uh, wants to ask or something raise the hand yes. Shivani, slide. Can you go to the next slide? Hello, am I yes. audible, sir? Yes, Shivani, I am. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, so we don't have any questions. Uh, we just had one question. Could someone repeat what was what was the relevance of cancer breast as systemic disease? Relevance. So from the time uh, by a lump which is a uh, 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 palpable. already tumor cells are already there in the circulation in the form of micrometastasis so that is what is the chain in the theory from halsted who did a radical mastectomy that time so hundreds of years back he thought a local disease then the fisher's concept came as a micrometastasis systemic disease so the reason why chemotherapy should be given from rather all stages of the disease that is what is the concept too. i hope i have answered that question yes thank you so much uh, do do if you got, if the delegates have any other doubts or queries you can put it in the chat box and sir will address them in the next 5 minutes uh, we have the mcq uh, discussions uh, to be done as well so can we proceed with that harshita so Okay. So by the time we are quickly uh, going through the MCQ discussion, uh, delegates can put their doubts and queries in the chat box. And after this dis discussion, after five ten minutes, we will address those doubts and queries. Uh, is it okay, sir? Yeah, yeah, for me no problem. Okay, so Thank let's you, go sir. ahead. Uh, Abilash, can you please uh, moderate the MCQ discussion? Yes, sure. I'm already clearing. Yes, sir. uh you uh, the, your voice is breaking if there is a connectivity issue then i can okay the moderator hello am i audible clearly now oh uh, no abilash i'm not audible <laughs> it's it's okay uh, should i okay. go ahead with can the moderation yes yes i'll go ahead no problem okay yes please so uh the first mcq a 59 year old female underwent a screening mammography which of the following findings in her mammogram is not suggestive of a malignancy option a irregular mass option b uh, ill defined margin option c macro calcification and option d speculation you guys can put your answers in the chat box in the next 2 uh, minutes okay we've got a we've got an answer macro calcification and this is the right answer yes thank you 
Harshita, can we please move ahead? Option C is the correct answer. Yes. A 48 year old woman was advised mammography for the presence of lump in her right breast. According to the mammogram findings, the lump was categorized, categorized as Birad's disease. What will be the next appropriate step in this patient? Option one, perform true cut biopsy. Option B, routine annual screening. Option C, fine needle aspiration cytology. And op option D, follow up every six months for two years. Delegates can put the answers in the chat box. You've got an answer. Option D from Tanusha. Anyone else? Any more options? Okay. Uh, we can move ahead. Option D is the correct answer. Option. Okay, here the option is written wrong. It's option D, follow up every month for two years. Yes, C is written, but it's option D. Uh, moving ahead. Yes. A woman is admitted to the hospital for the management of breast cancer. The tumor is three centimeter in size with ipsilateral mobile axillary lymph nodes. There is no distant metastasis. Give the TNM staging of the tumor. Delegates can put their answers in the chat box. Option A, T2N2, M0. B, T2N1, 0. C, T1, N1, M0. And D, T3, N2, M0. Okay, so we've got the answer. It's option B. Let's see whether it's correct. Yes, it is correct. Option D is the right answer, T2, N1, N0. Moving ahead. A 42-year-old woman presents with a history of painless breast lump measuring 6.2 to 4.5 centimeter in the left upper outer quadrant and no axillary lymph nodes involved. Core cut biopsy showed ductal carcinoma in situ. She underwent surgery with resection of all tumor tissues with adequate margins and post-operative HPE showed DCIS with the intermediate grade. Necrosis with 6 millimeter clearance on margin. Which of the following treatments is needed? Option A, no additional treatment. Option B, adjuvant chemotherapy. Option C, adjuvant radiotherapy. Option D, adjuvant, adjuvant chemo radiotherapy. Delegates can put their answers in the chat box. We'll wait for another one minute. Okay, option C, okay. Uh, Arshita, you can scroll down. Yes, option C is the correct answer, adjuvant radio head. Coming to the last slide, the thank you slide. Uh, yes, uh, Dr. Dr. Shuna, we are, we, have done, we are done with the MCQ discussion. Would you like to add something? Yeah, I just want to tell the all the students that uh, um, in the modern era of the investigations, which are, you know, uh, students are bombarded with investigations. Carcinoma of the breast means what will you do? I will do PET scan. See, that should not come at all. Stage one and two, there is no necessity to do any test, including CT scan, as well as PET scan, et cetera, et cetera. As you mentioned, triple assessment. So in Indian scenario, very important is to do a proper clinical examination of a patient. I can give innumerable examples. Patient coming with the leg pain, you don't even examine the pulses and ask for a venous Doppler, thinking that's a venous problem. He will go and come back and telling that veins are normal. Then you ask for arterial Doppler. So this is what happens. So clinical examination should guide you what I should do. That is why in the carcinoma of the breast, you do a clinical examination. Even mammogram can miss, miss a carcinoma of the breast in 5%. That is the time you have a clinical examination and in suspicious, go ahead with the biopsy. Still have a doubt, you do an incision biopsy. Okay, guided. Anyway, so please uh, use make use Use of this virtual uh, discussion, whatever we are having, but in addition, make an opportunity. Whenever an opportunity comes, go to the bedside. Patient is the best teacher for you to demonstrate. You will have some signs there. Try to examine and train your fingers to know what is soft, what is hard, and what is uh, what is firm. See here, we will. You go with the by heart, telling that carcinoma of the breast is hard. 
irregular and immobility, I said. You will repeat the same thing in a patient where the lump can also be mobile. So very important points are there. So do not neglect the clinical methods in surgery. Um, that's all I can tell. Bedside sir, clinic. We attend. Have, yes, yes, sir. Please continue. Yeah, attend as many bedside clinics as possible. I know this is a pandemic, but uh, every uh, hope that it will end and uh, make use of that. In the meantime, make use of the virtual whatever discussion you are having. Yes, that's all. So we have a doubt in the chat box. Is there any difference? in nature of calcification seen in ultrasound in benign versus malignant tumors? No, usually we talk about a micro calcification only important, micro calcification. If you find a macro calcification, it is more of a benign conditions. So that is possible. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, do, the, if there are any more doubts or queries by the delegates, you can please put it in the chat box. If not, we can proceed ahead with the conclusion of the case discussion. Uh, if you, if you have this one or two minutes, I told you I can share that. Uh, yes, uh, definitely, sir. Definitely, please go so, ahead. Yeah, so you can. I please unshare the your presentation. Yes, sir. Harshita, please stop sharing the presentation. Thank you. So you can present. I think so. We'll have to make you the co-host. Just a second. I'll ask the technical team to make you. The yeah, just try that. If it is just, I won't take more time. Just allow me to. I've done that. He is the co-host now. Yeah. Okay, thank okay. you, Abhilash. Sir, you can share your screen. Is it uh, seen? Yes, sir. It's sharing. Is the screen seen? Yes, sir. We can see the screen. Very good. So, uh, for the benefit of all of you, you look at this lump, which is uh, so nicely round, na? little fat here. So, this is classical fibroadenoma. Fibroadenoma is a round. That's why we say you know, it's freely mobile, etc., right? Now, this picture I showed you only to impress upon you big dilated veins and to tell you what is bosylated surface. Don't use the bosylated surface unless that not the nodularity what you are seeing should be more than two centimeter minimum. So, less than one centimeter up to one centimeter, you can call it as a nodular. So, this is obviously a bosylated surface with the dilated veins. You can see here classical of a phyllodes tumor. So surgery cases and clinics is not difficult. Look at the images. Most of them will self-explanatory, whether it's a thyroid, whether it's a breast, whether it's a inguinal hernia, or even for that matter, lump in the abdomen. One look at the obstetric jaundice patient with a big gallbladder, which is oval shaped. You know, most probably it's a periampulary carcinoma like that. Now, this is a case you can see I was talking about cyclical mastalgia and nodularity. Look at the difficulty in which you're trying to separate because it has no capsule. So this is classical of a uh, Andy. Andy is a uh, abrasion of normal development involution. This we removed it because a true cut biopsy revealed it's a atypical ductal hyperplasia. So excision was done. It came as benign. But this is what patient requires a follow-up. That's what I was telling, I think, Maria, that uh, a previous history of any lump in the breast surgery. Yeah, this is, you can see here, you may call it as a malignancy, one look, but, but that's why I said this is actually a lactation abscess. If at all a malignancy which can mimic like this will be mastitis, carcinomatosa. I will show that picture to you. I think I may be having... Yeah, this. Just look at this picture. This is almost looking like that other picture which I showed you. But see the nipple area or complex is ulcerated. The whole breast itself is the lump. Actually, two-thirds, there's a beauty orange edema. And one more nodule on the other side. So that is why this is mastitis carcinomatosa. And the one which I showed you earlier is a lactation abscess, right? Okay. Now, look at this circumferential retraction on the right side here and uh, slit-like retraction of benign disease. So this is benign and this is malignancy. What is that spotter? There's a nipple areola complex. Nipple is almost getting destroyed. So this is the early Paget's disease of the nipple. It's an intraductal carcinoma spreading along the lactiferous duct and retracting the nipple. 
And this is how you elicit a purity orange if it is an early case. But if it is a case like this, you see the whole breast has become small, you know, puckered like with a classical purity orange. So if the early case, slide your uh, breast skin with your finger and thumb and just ask, uh, bring it together. And there you can see that uh, this is a, a purity orange. Yes, elevation of the hands showing, you can see here, you see the symmetry here. This side nipple is uh, uh, normal and this side nipple retraction. Here you can see the axilla and a lump on the lateral view showing an ulceration. These are different patient. You can see the same patient. When a patient is asked to bend forwards, this is not bending because this lump here was fixed to serratus anterior. In fact, that's why it was not falling forward. I mentioned and I repeat again, serratus anterior forms the chest wall with the ribs and intercostal muscle, but not pectoralis muscles. And this is of course a Again, a advanced carcinoma. You see the incision there. So that's the mastectomy. You can see this side is normal. And a scar recurrence. Whenever you have a scar recurrence, etc., MRI may help you to know exactly whether there's a recurrence, etc. Otherwise, routinely, we don't do MRI. If there's a DCIS with a lot of uh, diffuse component, dense breast, implants, scars, then only say MRI, otherwise don't mention MRI. This is of course a chest wall is studded with the nodules, is a recurrence, almost like a cancer and curacy. Yes, this is, I mentioned mastered is carcinomatosa. Yeah, this is the Paget's disease, so say, say classical ulceration. You can see, no? Yes. So these are my few uh, presentations. I stop sharing, yeah. Thank you so much, sir. It was a really informative uh, presentation. I am really glad that uh, you shared that with us and you shared your insights on that, on this, regarding the same. And uh, firstly, I would like to uh, extend sincere and warm thanks from the entire, on behalf of the entire team and the delegates as well. I'm really sure they were, this session was a add on to their entire academic year and this, this session was so informative and uh, you've covered each and every detail of the uh, of a breast cancer lump and examination and history taking and uh, the emphasis uh, on clinical examination the clinical part i am really happy and i'm really glad that even i'm a very strong believer that uh, to become a great doctor to become a great surgeon you yes. need to know the clinical aspects you need to know the clinical examinations and that's what clinicase is doing like you know we are trying to do our best to organize such conventions and case discussions so that that can be enhanced because somewhere during the pandemic and also yes because of the new advanced technological diagnostic uh, techniques we've forgotten our basics somewhere so that's why this is all that that, that is what that is what team clinic is trying to do and thank you so much we are so glad and we're so honored to attend this today's session it was amazing thank you best wishes to all of your students so would you like to give uh, us a short feedback regarding the, uh, your experience with Clinicase? Myself? Yes, sir. I want, oh, what to your say? Your feedback, your feedback. My, 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 my feedback for one is uh, organizers. It's an excellent idea. Yes, you know, I have seen in the last uh, one and a half years, virtual platforms participated in many. So that is something which is uh, taken up during last one and a half, two years. And uh, according to me, it is going to stay it's going to stay, that is number one. But having said that, a uh, student should not become the slave of a virtual platform only. That is another important caution words. Tomorrow, don't think that virtually I will do one surgery and you start doing on a patient. You say I have done everything I have seen in uh, YouTube, doing a uh, say spinal anesthesia, doing a lumbar puncture, doing a central line. No, that will, that will help you, but that is not the ultimate answer. So similarly, you all have to go to the bedside as much possible. That's only my answer because it's possible, feasible, or whether patients cooperative, these are two different issues. Then, so as for the organizers are concerned, yes, I'm happy that uh, you are able to do it uh, actually, we'll put it as a selfless job of uh, 
getting all the students connected from India as well as outside. So wonderful uh, efforts from your side. And uh, please continue with the good work. And uh, uh, as a teacher, I am also very happy to be associated with you. Yes, if I am free, uh, I, I, I will definitely participate if I am free for uh, uh, in future presentations also, if it is required. Definitely, sir. We would love to have you on board again. Even the delegates, even our members, they would love to hear from you again and learn from anyway, learn a lot of things from you. Yes, yeah, sir. So, so students, much, uh, students, continue your hard work again and uh, see the patients. Thank you. Thank you, so sir. Much. Abhilash, Thank you can go ahead and conclude. Yes, I would like all the participants to turn their camera on just for like 10 seconds. So then we can take a picture along with sir. Yeah, uh, before I forget, uh, I would like to thank our presenters. Uh, yes, Anna, Maria, I can see and uh, Yes, Tanusha, yes, I can see now. Only, yes, uh, the band, uh, the width, and uh, the, the, sorry, the, the cable, cables, whatever we are talking, um, that's the problem. Maybe in uh, metropolitan cities, you get a fiber optic cables, which have got a better connectivity compared to a few areas. Even I'm not having a fiber optic connectivity in our place. I was a little worried sometimes. It's raining also here. Tanusha is uh, smiling. It may be raining in Mangalore also, I think. Yes. So yes. nice to see all yes, of you. Yes, sir. It is raining here. Delegates, please switch on your camera for 10 seconds. There are only few cameras on. Okay, I'm giving five more seconds, then I'll click a picture. So, Devanshu, Monica, Avi, Rahul, Odit, Anshika, Surbi, Sabrina, Pranita, Harshita, Vinay. You can it's turn like your cameras on. You are taking attendance. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sondarya, Padmavati, Danish. Okay. I'll click a picture on three, two, one. Okay. Three, two, one. Let me change the window. Okay. Second window goes. Three, two, one. Thank you so much sir, for being a part of our uh, global convention. And thank you so much, delegates, for participating in it. A, a feedback form will be shared on the group. Please make sure to fill it. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. And have yeah. a good night. Good night. Stay safe. Take care. Bye. Bye, everyone. You can leave the call now.